something that I've wanted to do my entire lifetime. Since I was a little kid, um, I used to take tin cans and stick a neck in them and try to be able to get tar, per se, you know, back then, and uh, it's been a dream of mine. I, I thought I wanted to build, and I do want to build eventually a guitar, but that's what I started with. That was my dream, to get to build myself a guitar at some point in time. And, but, um, I actually got started building fiddles, believe it or not. Um, built three of those, and uh, I was in a little band playing uh, guitar and doing some lead singing for a band that I was in. And the uh, banjo player one day, just right out of the blue, he said, have you ever considered building a mandolin? And I said, no, I'd like to try one, you know, at some point in time. And uh, I said, do you know anybody that builds? And he said, yes, I know a, a gentleman by the name of Stanley Couch that lives in, in Manchester area. Or he did at that time, he has since moved. And, um, I said, well, I'd like to meet him. And um, February, seven years ago, I went and met this gentleman. And uh, he was very nice to me and gave me some literature information. and actually let me bring his mold home to be in the sides in, you know, and stuff. And I just went from there and um, uh, through trial and error, um, I started this thing right here that I'm holding in my hand right now. And uh, there's a gentleman up in Berea, his name is John Nance. Uh, he called me one day out of the blue. He got my phone number from Stanley and asked me you know, was I building a mandolins? And I said, yeah, I've started my first one. And he said, I'd like to see it. And I said, well, I don't have nothing but the top and sides and neck glued together so far. So I'm just now getting started. And I said, I've got a back plate, you know, which is this one here. And I said, it ain't carved or anything. He said, can I see it? So I took a trip to Berea and met with him. And uh, he was just very intrigued by it, and it being my first mandolin, and he said, I'll take it, and he paid me for it on the spot. He sold it to another friend of mine. His name is Frank Farley. Um, he's another real good mandolin player, and Frank had it for a pretty good while, and I reckon him and John got back on a, a deal or a trade. John wanted it back. first met a guy named uh, John Nance, and he had a gray mantle, and he showed it to me, and I played it, and I was just blown away by it. It was number two that he ever made, and he said he had number one, but he'd sold it. Years go by, I meet Johnny, and a friend of mine showed up at the house one morning, had a mantle he wanted to sell, and I opened the case, and it was number one. It was this one. So I I come I got it, you know, I bought it. I called sent pictures of it to Johnny. He called me immediately and asked where I got pictures of this man and I told him I just bought it. And he just said, I don't believe it. I said, Yeah I did, I'm serious, I got it. So that's how I come about to get the mandolin. It was just weird how things work out, you know, in life. You I never know that I'd ever meet Johnny. You know, it's weird. <laughs> Here I am. I played bluegrass for, I don't know, it's been a while. And I played with some bands, a Wilderness Trail Band around home. We played a long time together. I played with Dean Osborne Band. Uh, then I filled in with Bobby Osborne. And I've played with uh, uh, Tim Farmer on his show and right now I'm playing with Rick Bartley and just we play pretty much traditional bluegrass so he writes a lot of our material too. Rick. I don't know. Oh man the playability is awesome and I've not I've played several of his mandolins I mean and all of them play good and the tone is there too. Uh, you don't have to play them hard. I mean, you just barely hit it and it's, it jumps out. I don't know what he does inside, but it's working. I mean, me and him's talked about it before, you know. I said, whatever you're doing, everybody likes it that's seen it. You know, they've asked me what I got, what am I playing? And I let everybody play it. 
Needless to say, I gotta change strings a lot. <laughs> It's got a, it's got a crispness to it, but it's also got a lot of depth, you know. It's got a lot of mid-range, if you want to go low on the low, low notes, it's got it, or the high notes. So, it gives whatever you ask it to do. It's a better mammal than I am a player.